Welcome to Two Cents FC. I'm your host, Amogi Kugo, back again with my guy, L. Each week, we'll be talking with individuals from around the soccer world, learning about their stories and getting their unfiltered thoughts and opinions. I know it's been a while. We got some things uh, behind the scenes that we're working on, so bear with us. But this week, we're joined by one of my old-time combatants, uh, Pebo <laughs> Due. Uh, we'll be getting to know all about Pebo, talking about his playing career, his transition into business and marketing strategy strategies. People, how you feeling today? I'm good, man. Happy, blessed. It's almost the weekend, so you know, almost time to celebrate. But yeah, we're good, man. We're good on this stuff. No, I appreciate you, and thank you so much for taking time to join our show. Uh, sure. As we as we do with every guest, two truths and a cap. So, L, give us the rundown. All right, so. We love to play a game here on the show just to kick it off. Um, called Two Truths and a Cap. So this is a show where um, you tell us three facts about yourself. Two will be true. One will be a lie. And I'm hoping I have to guess what the lie is. Um, I know you've been really keeping score lately. I'm, hey, I'm still up. I'm, I'm down bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm down up. bad. Yeah. So, so Peebo, whenever you're ready, man, um, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is dope. Um, <clears throat> all right. First one I would say... Uh, I've once shared the pitch with three World Cup winners at once. Ooh. Second fact is I've been a vegan for two years now, full on vegan. And then the third fact would be uh, I worked at a medical spa for a year. So this man came prepared. Ah. <laughs> hmm. uh, He's African and he lives in the DMV. So it's like that vegan one. I'm having a hard time with that one. Uh, I didn't see the medical spa on the, on the LinkedIn though. So I'm going to go with that one. All right. World Cup. You said World Cup uh, winners? Winners. Yeah, winners. Uh, okay. I'm trying to think. Who won last one? Spain. You're doing math over here. <laughs> Spain, uh, Germany, shared the pitch. Oh, he might have played them when they were like younger or something. Uh, I'm going uh, vegan. Yeah, vegan's a lie. Or right, vegan's the cat. Same for you? No, nah, Elsa, medical I'm gonna say spa. Medical spa. I would say medical spa, yeah. Yeah, vegan is a cat. I'm I'm definitely not a vegan, bro. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, yeah, I gotta definitely go with my African vegan. instinct. I'm too, I'm too African with a fraud. I goosey stew, you know. Yeah, respect. I was like, that was yeah. that threw me off. That was pretty good. That was probably one of the better ones. You came prepared. I'll be trying, man. I'll be trying. Okay. Well, yeah. Let's get right into it. Uh, first question we ask every guest, every uh, family member of the show: When did you fall in love with soccer? True, man. Honestly, I can't even remember, but I just remember like, like playing for the rec leagues way back in the day. And I was having like way too much fun with it. Like to the mm -hmm. point where like games would be over and I want to play like another game. Um, you know, obviously we didn't have one at the time, but um, yeah, I just remember back in the day, just loving the game, wanting to play. Like even when it came down to like recess in school, I was always that one trying to get jiggy, you know, just, just doing the most on the field. Um, in terms of like watching the game, man, I think I think where I really fell in love with it was like the 2002 World Cup. Like I remember bits and pieces of the 98 World Cup, but I wasn't really like like hip with like countries and teams and really understanding yeah. how the the format and the structure of like you know international soccer. But I just remember 2002 World Cup was like, oh, this is my sport. Like every cleat that you know I see right now, but I'm trying to copy. <laughs> I'm trying to copy it for myself, but. Uh, yeah, it was it was around that time where I really fell in love with the game and and, and definitely wanted to, to have a future in the game, you know. Perfect. So give us your your like origin story because I know you're African. Are you first generation mm -hmm. as well? First gen, yes. Yeah, okay. uh, so both my parents are Ivorian. Okay. A uh, little bit of a tough time, you know, missing qualifications. But yeah, I was gonna say my uh, uh, sincere condolences. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was just chatting with my boy. Uh, you might know him, Chris Hangy, but he's in yep. Cameroon. And he's like, sorry, bro. Like, you know, you know just, <laughs> just apologizing. But, you know, it, it, both of my parents are from Ivory Coast. My whole family's from Ivory Coast. I was born here. Um, they didn't really, they weren't really involved with soccer. But, you know, 
um, my mom kind of gave me the freedom to just like go and explore different sports at a young age, which was which is super dope. Um, and it just landed on soccer. I enjoyed it. They supported me the whole way, and 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 even to this day, like you know, working in sports, they're they're super supportive about it. Perfect. And then you're from the DMV as well, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was okay. born in Tacoma Park, like right outside of DC. Uh, okay. Lived in like yeah Silver Spring, Wheaton area uh, for about five years, and then moved up, you know, to the suburbs in Germantown, uh, and then lived in Germantown until I moved out the house um, and went to college, but. Yeah, throughout that, played played uh you know youth soccer for Bethesda, played for MSC, played for DC United Academy, um before going to college. Um, but yeah, those basically the three main clubs that I played with. Played high school, um, public school soccer, so it was all dope experience. All right, cool. Yeah, so we've had a couple of friends from the show from the DMV area, and obviously you guys have a a great contingent. All you guys keep in touch. You know, when y'all back for the holidays, y'all do the pickups. We're going to give you two-minute elevator pitch for why DMV is the number one hotbed of soccer in the States. <laughs> Freddie, you do. That's it. <laughs> really? It's like, nah, Mic let drop. Me let me stop. Right. Every, everybody, knows, everybody knows Freddie. So when they're like, you know, Freddie, DMV, that, yeah. that association. It's like, oh, yeah, I know that dude. Um, man, I mean, DMV, we have so many different talented players. You know, I mean, obviously, like, you have your Californias, your Texas, your New Yorks, New Jersey areas. But I think when you when you actually, I guess like it's tough to explain because you, everybody thinks that you know yeah. believes that their their city is the best. But just like I just stopped playing what last year and prior to that, like we would do off season pickups. I mean the amount of talent just from like old heads, considering myself as an old head from my age. To like guys who are still playing in college right now. I mean, the talent's unbelievable. Um, and a lot of these guys are getting looked at, you know, in MLS levels, guys are going overseas to play. Like one of my my good homies, Gideon, you know, he's like one of the first from the area to go play for Arsenal. You know, yeah. that's a that's a that's a proper club, you know, Gunners, we 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 on the way back, but like hold on, hold on. You're a gunner supporter? Just, yes, sir, yes, sir. Oh my god, I gotta do more, I gotta do more research before we get the get I, the, I mean, the guest on the show. You know? I'm a quiet, I'm a quiet gunner fan, bro. I'll be on the low low. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm I'm a loud. Uh, oh, there you go, my brother. You inspired me, bro. For real. Sure, sure. Um, but yeah, you know, just just the amount of talent from the area. That's a that's a tough. I mean, it's not a a great elevator pitch, but I feel like once you experience and you really see, like, you know, in these pickup sessions, it varies from age. Like, it's not just all right. There's a certain group that came from one club team that's nice. It's just like. Mm-hmm. Everybody thinks their club team is nice. We all come together and try to prove it. In a pickup game, things get heated, and, you know, we go from there. But it's all love. I mean, I can't even tell you the last time I actually, you know, played like that, like competitive, you know. But I just remember the <clears throat> there was a certain time, you know, in the off season and stuff like that. You know, there's, there's you know, things to prove in terms of, like, just establishing yourself as, as a great player from the DMV. You know, a lot of people hear the name Peebo. So, you know can't can't you know pull up to the the pickup game you know sluggish yeah. and looking like a bum you know just try to you know, an all good healthy competition and, and and just trying to do the best uh best you can do you know no that's what it's all about and i i respect you for respect that uh, like repping your region uh so i want to have a follow-up question on that and i know we're going to get into some other things down the road down the show why is dc united not as like not flourishing with their homegrown talent if DMV is such a hotbed. <laughs> I'm going to have to Brandon call you out real quick. Are, are, there, are there any <laughs> off limits? <laughs> um, that's a great question, bro. Honestly, that's a great question that a lot, like it's, it's, it's not new dialogue. Like that's questions that like myself and, you know, guys that I mentioned before, you know, we yeah. talk about, it's like, we have so much talent here. How come like, you know, DC United obviously has a record for like most homegrown sign, but in terms of like success, like you mentioned, I don't think we're or the club is up there. I say we're because of the part of Loudon, but like, yeah. I don't think you know we're in the the, I guess the the conversation as like the Phillies or like you know even Red Bull beforehand, like they had the whole system going like that. But it's it's something within that I can't you know I'm not in the I'm not in the 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 front office. <laughs> doing the drawing board you know I had I I I offered up my opportunity to kind of help and you know be um, a resource 
just in terms of connecting to like the youth product in in the area you know obviously things didn't work out so can only respect it but that's 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 a million dollar question honestly yeah and like so like your your upbringing in the soccer space you know you play college you play college ball talk about that college experience and then, then transitioning to pro you know coming from the dmv mm-hmm. yeah man i mean it was because like i don't know if you guys did like too much homework but like my class going in we were all DMV. Like, we were playing for DC United Academy. Uh, I mean, you, yeah, we played against each yeah. other, but, like... No, nah, we didn't uh, play y'all. We would have smacked y'all, but, you know, we, you know, I'm, t- I got, I'm, I I'm oh, tapped into my DMV family. I'm tapped my, in, so, Oom. Um, yeah, Oom, um, Travis Pittman. Yeah, you know, Travis, Alan all the boys. That, like, all yeah. the, we, we came in, like, DMV, like... Y'all came in like, deep. Marlon, that was part of the plan for Marlon. He was like, all right, okay. I'm gonna I'm going to recruit a lot of these guys from the area. They all know each other. They have a camaraderie that chemistry um so going into college is like you know obviously like you're a freshman starting and playing every game you're obviously feeling yourself and and the confidence is just there from immediately um but I think it helped in terms of the transition to like playing professional because we had the opportunity to play against like really good schools um and and obviously test our limit to them and be like all right as soon as we thought we were hot shit we would, excuse me, excuse my French, but like we would get humbled by like an Akron, you know what I mean? Or like humbled by like a Maryland. So we're like, all right, these guys are the next level. And that's just being completely straight up. You know, we had a great team, but like in terms of turning the page and like reaching that next level, we struggled a little bit. But um, our, our training sessions, they were professional. I mean, I think all of us, the, the second part of that question is like all of us had the same mentality. It was like, we just want to go pro. We just yeah. want to be professionals. We just want to, whether that be a homegrown with DC or get drafted or whatever, that's that's what time it was for everybody. So we would always push ourselves and and push each other to like, hey, like it's time to go. Like this is this is what we're trying to get. This is it's not just the college career. Like some people just see they just come to college, enjoy it, play a little bit here and there. It's like we wanna we wanna be out in like three, you know, <laughs> two, three years, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, facts. Um I, I think that was part of it you know, just having that mentality and that mindset of just like, and Owen will tell you, man, Owen was, Owen was, he was my roommate in college. It's like my boy for life. Um, we would talk about it all the time. It's just like, yo, we gotta, we gotta keep going. Even though, even through it's like, you got this 5 a.m. lift. Like, yeah, it is what it is. We gotta go through it and, and, and it's just gonna help us get to where we wanna be. So what, what advice would you have for like a young player that, you know, is going to college, you know, wants to go pro? Because obviously you see the young guys going, whether it's homegrown, whether it's overseas, everyone has their own path. And obviously when we came up, it was a little bit different. Um, but, you know, those 5 a.m. wake up calls or like, uh, you know, West Virginia was a fun school. I, I know. Yeah. Like yeah. How does it yeah, yeah. how you stay? How do you stay disciplined? Like what, what advice yeah. would you have for people? Yeah, man. It's, I mean, looking back, it's just, it's just life is about balance, man. It's like, you know, I was, when I was uh, growing up and I really wanted to like be a pro, like I would kind of like not isolate myself from my friends, but like really like make it seems like, yo, I got to do this because I got to perform this weekend. And <clears throat> like, granted, that was a good, good path to go on. But like looking back, like it didn't necessarily help me get to where I want to be. Um, you know, there's a lot of different factors, luck, opportunity, et cetera, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I would just say balance, man. Like there's, there's a discipline, like you mentioned, there's a crazy, especially in college, it's like not even just West Virginia. It's like every school you go to, you're going to have girls, you're going to have parties, you're going to have whatever it is, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and it, it's facts, but like just knowing how to to balance that in terms of like, level setting and being honest with yourself in terms of like what you really want to do. Do you just want to, are you cool with like just being on the team and like getting yeah. the flicks for Instagram? And are you cool with that? Or are you just trying to yeah. play in the MLS cup or like go overseas and play? Cause there's two different, two different bar yeah. games there. You know what I'm saying? That's facts. So I think yep. the first thing is just like being honest with like, what do you want to do? Like my last two years at Loudon, I played with, I had the opportunity, like the blessing to play with like a lot of young cats, like, Griffin Yao, Kevin Paredes, Moses Nyman, um, you know, Ku, uh, all these guys. And I would literally, my office was always open. They could always come yeah. and talk to me about whatever. And, you know, I'll be, I'll be exclusive with this, but like a lot of them were, they, they just wanted to go. They wanted to, to, they wanted success and I would hold them accountable and, and, you know, they responded to it. But like, 
sometimes you won't always see that. And then like this generation of players, it's like, they say they want something, but then when you hold them accountable, they don't respond to that thing. And that's, that's where it kind of, there's no alignment in that area, but my advice, you know, long with an answer, but like, I, w- I would just say, just make sure you find balance and just be true to yourself. Yeah. Like if you want to, if you want to be a pro act like a pro, if you want to, if you're content with just, you know, finding the cameraman where he's in the corner flag and just uploading <laughs> that pic on the ground, that's cool too. But just, you yeah. know, just make sure you're honest with yourself, you know? No, nah, that's what it's all about. I like that you brought that up because you see it a lot, especially, you know, you talked about three top players from, you know, that are on the, the first team now. Um, mm-hmm. And there's a lot of other players that don't make it because, you know, they want the free FIFA game, you know, every every year when it comes out or they want the shoes so they exactly. can post. Um, but it takes work if you want to get to that next level of, you know, whether it's Champions League or, you know, USL or MLS. And like for you to say mm-hmm. that, um, you know, it's always good to hear from somebody that's been there and, and has done it. So real quick, sure. you know, just because, you know, I, I like soccer a little bit. Prospects out of Paredes, Griffin, Moses, who you who you like if you, Arsenal, who you who's like, yo, if you're a scout, watch this one. I think, you know, he might have something. Yeah. Um <clears throat> Moses has always been my favorite, man. Like, and that's no disrespect to like Griffin or any of the other guys, but like the first time I see Moses play, I was just like, wow, this kid is not only like talented, he's just next level intelligence. You got it. Like playing in USL games, making like 28, 29, 30 year olds look foolish, you know, just by his smarts, not necessarily by his physique or anything, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, So he's always been somebody that, you know, a player that I admire, just his professionalism, even like just this communication on the field. Like you look at those things in in younger players and you're like, all right, this kid has what it takes to to kind of succeed. You know, he's got the professional mentality. Um, I haven't had the chance to talk with him lately, but I, I know he's probably doing his thing at, in the locker room in DC. But um, even Griffin as well. Griffin, Griffin, uh, he was playing in front of me as a left winger. I would, I would be honest with him. You know, it's all love between me and him, Kevin as well. I think he fits DC United's system right now really well uh, when he's healthy. Um, yeah. He's just like one of those attack minded players that can, you know, obviously play on the flank, do both sides of the ball. But, you know, honestly, Moses is probably my number one guy and just in terms of like, okay, I thought he would be as, as, as he was like one of the first to sign professionally and, and, you know, have a a chance to go overseas maybe. Respect. Thanks for my scouting report. I'm always interested to see who's (laughs) next up. So um, let's Let's talk about your career though. Cause you know, you've, you know, you played a long time, you know, won some accolades, did some cool things. Talk about your experience, you know, playing professional in the States. Yeah, man, it was crazy, bro. It was just like, I, my girl will tell you, like, she's like, you should write a book about your career just because it was just so, <laughs> so crazy. Like, I met her probably, like, halfway through and, uh, like, I would say established USL player. But even then, just, like, the the unknowns and, like, the anxieties of, like, finding a team in the offseason was just still crazy. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. wow, you, you can attest to that. But uh, it was good, man. It was dope. I'm thankful for my career and, you know, uh, Played as long as I could, uh, did eight years, um, played for some dope clubs, met some great people, man. Like, you know, had some a few good coaches. Um, always always appreciated for like not only the just the soccer experience, but just where soccer has taken me to like different cities to be able to like meet people who I mm-hmm. wouldn't necessarily meet in DC or on the East Coast or something like that. You know, living in Oklahoma, living in Phoenix uh Jacksonville Florida where I met my girl um you know just just no career overall you know um not really any regrets uh wish wish I would have won a little bit more had a little a little uh, more trophies to walk away with but you know it's it's all an opportunity man had some dope experiences no nah, respect and uh you know that's what it's all about you know soccer is one of those sports that gives you life experience not only on the field but off the field oh yeah so with that being said, you know, towards the tail end of your career, you know, early you talked about, you know, offering your services to DC on like the front office side, but you did an internship mm-hmm. with them. So talk about like yeah. that, those like last few years, were you already plotting? How did it all come about? Yeah, no, that's, that's, I'm so happy you asked that. That was, uh, so it was probably like right after I left North Carolina FC, which was what, 20, 2018. And basically the way that went, was like we had a pretty good team like we had like some names like 
Kyle Becker, Daniel Rios to lose. Um, you know, Willito Fernandez, Austin Gray, Drake Fortune, DJ T- Like, we had a stacked team, and we didn't make playoffs. So it was a disappointment for the club. So uh, the club decided, because I, I really enjoyed my time at Raleigh, but the club decided to go in a different direction, a younger direction. So what they were going to do is kind of, you know, feed off their youth academy and start, you know, poaching, like, younger players, which was cool. Like, it's business. Um, so uh, ironically, I got a call from uh, Dane Murphy at the time, Dane is somebody that I used to train with when he was on DC and I was in the academy. I used to train with him. He used to kind of like take me under his wing or whatever. Um, but he called me and he asked me about. Like, and real quick, real quick for context, Dane Murthy, he's the one that's killing it overseas right now. Uh, he's American uh, executive. Uh, his yes, trajectory is, is crazy. So if you guys crazy. have time, make sure you guys look him up. What club is he with? Yeah, man. Uh, he was with uh, the club that had DK, and I think he just transferred yeah, to another he, club. Yeah, I think he, uh, I can't remember where he's at now, but he was with what, Barnsley? Barnsley yeah. Like but then he just got a new um, position. Yeah, man, he's doing his thing over there, big time. Um, but yeah, dude, he gave me a call. He gave me a call <clears throat> and was like, hey, you know, we're looking to kind of, you know, put this Loudon club together. Um, and, you know, obviously the whole, Elevator pitch is like, we might give you a first team opportunity. You know, that's like, <laughs> that's like <laughs> they gave you the okie doke, huh? You know, you know, it is like, you yeah, know, we're preseason and blase blase. And you know, I, you, you respect those things, but you're obviously like, I know the deal, bro. Um, yeah. so, so I was like, of course, because like it was always been my dream to come home and play, like obviously, like for DC United, but like just be a yeah. part of that organization. And now they finally had a USL team, you know, in the area. I was like, say less. So um, went through with that and, you know, I, I, I had a conversation with a lot of, you know, people around me because it was in the back of my mind and I was dealing with a lot of hamstring issues um, and, you know, hamstrings never go away, bro. So I yeah. um, was dealing with that. Like, I just never felt like I would always get to like a peak and then pull my hamstring and then never really get to like bounce back, back to that level. you know, by, okay. before the season would end. And I was thinking about that. So I was like, all right, let me let me just go and try to like, like if I get this opportunity with the first team, let me go try to, you know, handle my business and and we'll see what happens from there. And obviously, like if things don't go well, there's an opportunity to play with a USL team that's close to home, which is what I want. You know, uh, I'm a big family guy. Um, so went and signed there. Um, obviously went to preseason with DC. It was a good experience too, um, you know, playing with, with Wayne Rooney um, and yeah. a, lot of, a lot of dope players as well. Um, and obviously, you know, played with the, the USL team for the, the whole year. And uh, the year didn't actually go as, as it seemed for me, obviously. Like, I wanted to kind of sign that MLS contract, but things happened. And throughout the, throughout the 2019 year, I was just thinking to myself, I was like, all right, you're getting older. Like, what's your backup plan? Like, what are you going to do? Like, like, obviously, like, whether it be coaching or whatever, you got to have something in the back pocket. So I was just thinking about ways that I can kind of, like, influence in the in the environment that I was in. So I did a little bit of coaching with the academy. It was dope, but, like, coaching isn't necessarily my thing. I was more kind of, like, invested in, in, in terms of, like, the marketing and, like, just being a creative. So at the end of the 2019 season, um, I, I finessed and talked to, like, you know, some of the representatives from the front office and, and got an internship. Uh, with the with the digital team, which was dope, super cool. It was like no pressure. Um, they really like understood the fact that I was still a player, and like they weren't gonna have me like work a nine to five like every day while I'm training. And, and they were just very flexible with everything, which was dope. Um, but yeah, had had that. Um, really enjoyed it. Did some dope work. Um, it was kind of quiet during the off season. Um, but yeah, that was that was going into 2020 and. We all know what time hit after, you know, the spring is 2020. So it kind of disintegrated and kind of threw a little bit things off. So so that was a whole nother, uh, a different story. So Cool. So like, what's, what's like, what sort of stuff did you have to do with your internship and like, what like attracted to you, attracted you to like digital media? Were you always interested in, in it, like growing up? Yeah. Yeah. So going back to my, my truth about the medical, medical spa, like when I was in Raleigh, um, I already had that thought in my eyes. Just, you know, obviously, you know, the, the schedule for, for a football is like you train in the morning and you chill, you know what I mean? <laughs> you might have appearance or something later, do some coaching or whatever, but like you basically chilling. So I was like, all right, 
I like, I always had this like, um, I was always intrigued by like art and just like photography and videography film. So I, I bought myself a camera when I was down in um, Raleigh. I was just playing around with it. And I was like, oh, I could actually like do something with this. Like whether it be like a little freelance here and there. Mm-hmm. So I was on like Craigslist, just like looking. And then I saw this opportunity is like a uh, marketing assistant looking for a creative medical spa. And I was like, why not? So I applied, yeah. got the call back, Blue Water Spa. Like to this day, I'm cool with everybody there. They ended up hiring me. Um, and and from there, I was just like basically doing different marketing stuff within, within their... Uh, um just like content marketing within their, yeah. their front office so mostly like for example if they needed like uh, a video shoot with their employee like advertising a product like i would i would film that and stuff like that um but going into dc united i kind of had that background of like okay this is the kind of stuff that i'm interested in and i think i feel comfortable doing um but i basically went into it, it was like whatever you guys need like that's what i'm here for uh so there was like times where I would need to like audit different like USL websites or like MLS mm-hmm. websites and just see like how their UX would look like LAFC was one of the dopest websites at the time that I mean I mean it's probably still but like their whole social team and and digital team is strong super strong but like I just remember like going on their website and just like oh this is dope how they do this this is dope how they do that and just like taking notes and just reporting it back uh there was a time where I was editing editing video uh for like a a Loudon um, release video that we did with like um, like our um, our partners at the time I can't remember the brewery but there's two breweries um, so I chopped up that video um, just being insistent on shoots um, like I said it was it was very low lift just because they they understood the process but like just kind of being in that office and that environment gave me like an expectation of what you know life might look like after soccer so it was dope to be in there and I'm forever grateful for that opportunity. No, I think that's great advice for anyone listening that, you know, is active, actively playing. Like the fact that you were yeah. able to, you know, not take a chance on yourself, immerse yourself in a, in a new environment and just like soak up the knowledge and like be a sponge. I think that's the biggest thing for athletes when it comes to, you know, transitioning. And I remember when I was on LinkedIn and I seen you, I was like, Bleacher Report. I was like, okay, you know, <laughs> okay. I, I, I was like, I was like immediately curious. I was like, how do you just transition so smoothly? Um, but you yeah. saw you playing the disease early. So talk about that transition to Bleacher Report and like what exactly you're doing there. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, I was just as surprised as you, man, honestly. <laughs> but uh, uh, man, so right after I retired, I uh, – it was crazy how the whole retiring situation, um, because it was kind of early. Like we we I don't know if you heard, but like our team had an outbreak, a COVID outbreak, and then like we had three games left. And rather than like waiting and rescheduling, they were just like, Yeah, we canceled in the season. <laughs> I was like, Oh, so I guess I'm bad then. Yeah. Um, but I was just like I was just like stressing and, and not to not to harp too much on this, but like even before that, bro, like throughout the whole quarantine. I was making phone calls, like crazy phone calls, just reaching out to different people who are in the sports industry, just like yeah. chopping it up with them, bro. I had to talk to like over like 25 different people, just like in different industries, just like, hey, what do you do? Like, how do you like your job? Like, what are the type of like day-to-day nuances that you do? Right. Just understanding everything. Because like, as a player, bro, like you hear, oh, marketing, or you hear like, you know, front office, you're like, oh, you don't, you don't really understand how there's different sectors and different divisions of right. like everything, or there's like partnership team, brand team, digital team, like it's crazy. Yeah. Um, so like that was like the first, first seed that I planted was just was calling people, just introducing myself, like just seeing if there was an opportunity in the future, just letting them know. And the, and the dope thing about it was like everybody was willing to help. Like it all started from one person who referred me to three people. And then those people referred me to somebody and then it just kept going. Um, But yeah, moving forward, I retired and then, uh, you know, was blessed to get a job at this media company based here in DC called Industry Dive. It had a a content studio um, like in-house and they were looking for a project associate. So I interviewed for that. Was honestly, didn't really expect to to get that job, but there was Q4, they were in a big need. They were pushing, they needed help. Obviously, I had like a creative background. So they 
they trusted me with that and, um, you know, start off as a project associate, basically just helping out, you know, different project managers with different things, obviously your day to day. Um, and probably like two or three months into the job, I was chatting with the VP at the time and she was like, Hey, like, you know, you feel really comfortable, like speaking with people, you should like, you know, maybe thinking about doing like a client facing role. And, you know, at the time, I was like, well, what's the difference? You know, like, client facing, <laughs> like, what, what is it? I'm yeah. doing that now, right? Like, I'm emailing. Yeah. Like, I didn't really know. But, like, she was, she was kind of pushing me and, like, recommending me to kind of, like, follow the, like, strategist role. Okay. And I was like, yeah, like, I'll try it. So I um, I transitioned, like, um, you know, laterally to, to a content strategist. Did that for some time. And it was cool. It was, like, learning a lot of different things. Like, talking with a lot of different brands. Working with a lot of dope brands, like, um like Waze was a brand that I I was like shell shocked like that I was working with at the time I was like this is phenomenal um and then probably like this past summer I got referred to um who is now my my boss my senior manager um one of my homies who who works at Wasserman right now he referred me um and reached out we had a conversation um which turned into interviews and Mastered the interviews, got the job, and and now I'm on the the integrated strategy team at Bleacher Report, man. Man, job well done. That's what it's all about. Yeah, so, it's kind of random, bro. No, nah, that's. I mean, you, I, you, I feel like you planted the seeds, and like you have a good rep- uh, reputation. So everyone that knows you speaks highly of you, and that's been since we was since we were young, young. So you know the blessings right. are 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 deserved. With that being said, you know, you talked earlier about like teams when your DC role, like teams that you were looking at, websites that were cool, LAFC. Mm-hmm. How important, you know, in the integrated strategy role, how important is it to like the growth of a team in terms of like marketing and community and all that stuff? Wait, do you mean that, uh, like further elaborate, because I think I understand what you're saying, but I want to make sure I hit it on the head, bro. Like you say, LAFC, like they do a good job with their website. And obviously I feel like that mm-hmm. translates to like their support, like not only on the field, but like gotcha. on their socials as well. So how important is that with what you guys do um, at Bleacher Report, but, you know, seeing it from the outside, looking in with different teams across the leagues? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, bro, it's, it's crazy. Cause like before I started working with Bleacher Report, like, I had that like facade, that that vision of like what Bleacher Report is as a brand, and then like now working and like seeing the day to day and the inside of the business, I'm like, wow, I was completely wrong. <laughs> like I was yeah. completely wrong of like how this this whole thing works. Like it's it's just a like a beast of a business, which is pretty dope. Um, but yeah, like just just like one example is like you know when working with other members on our team, like let's say because what what I essentially do is partnership marketing. Uh, brands will come to us, they'll give us money um, to be in front of our audience, um, whether that's like branded or sponsored um, type of content. And one thing that I do realize, like, and I think this kind of alludes to your question is like, there's a brand to protect within Bleacher Report. And a lot of people are, understand that brand or that that protection. And it's not just like, you know, visa wants this so we'll just give them that and put that on our platform like there will be mm-hmm. conversations about it does this work does it not work like and if it doesn't work it doesn't make sense for the brand then it's not happening mm-hmm. um and that's one thing that i've learned like it, it's 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 crazy because like st- sometimes you get to like the image and the facade that like <clears throat> startups will do anything or whatever and it, it gives off that startup vibe just because things are happening so quickly like money's coming in we're yeah. making things happen but like, there's still that like, that like pushback if things don't make sense for the brand. So, it's kind of forced me to kind of like really look into like briefs when they come in, rather than just like, oh, this is what they want. But like, just hit on different like keywords and like, just like different th- themes and narratives that a, a brand is coming to, or coming to us with, yeah. and just like really processing it and digesting the brief rather than just like going over, oh, this works. This seems like it's dope. Like. Because there's, there's a there's a means of like whether it'll work or not, you know, if that makes sense. Okay, cool. So real quick, because I know L, this is like his bread and butter. He's sort of writing notes and stuff. Mm-hmm. What is a brief for some of us that don't know? Are you asking me or him? Uh, you, you. 
Oh, you the okay, guest. Uh, so, <laughs> so a brief, a brief <clears throat> um, is, is basically a brief. It's a, it's a message. It's a, it's a, um, it's a, I guess you can call it an invitation or whatever, but basically brands will, <clears throat> excuse me, come to us with a brief of like, you know, different deliverables of what they want exactly. For example, what okay. their problem is within their brand. Um, who are they trying to reach? You know, what audience are they trying to reach? What's their objective? You know, what would they like? What do they like from Bleacher Reports brand? Um, and just include all that information in a brief so that we can, when we, we're going to answer the brief with a proposal, we're hitting on all these things. So okay. it's not just like, oh, a brand's coming to us like, oh, we want to just make dope content that lives on BR Football's portfolio or platform. And then we create something and it's not what they're looking for. Yeah. It's something to address and, and to go by almost like guidelines, basically. Cool. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'm not even going to lie, yeah. too, because, like, you know, early on, I was like, man, Bleach Report, they low-key corny. But then I started doing more <laughs> research. Uh, y'all y'all doing some good stuff. And then the champions, the champions thing that y'all did, like. The champions, man. That, that should be, like, his own, like, standalone show. Like, y'all, y'all, y'all yeah. killing it. So, the champions is hot. The champions hot. And I feel that, bro. Like, trust me, I feel that, like, there's a different type of like, like there's there's different content out there that people generate or <clears throat> consume like well, and some people that's like, nah, that's why. Now I would be lying to you if I said like everything that Bleacher Report puts out, I I love. Like I'll be lying yeah. to you, bro. <laughs> but I, I completely understand that like, there's certain things that I see now like, that that I I pick up and I'm like, oh, this would be dope to kind of do it this way next time, or like the yeah. brand comes to us. And wants to do this like this would be dope in this way so i i don't look at the content as like you know it's, it's helpful consumption you know um not saying i agree with every single you know video or photo or whatever mm -hmm. and, and the other thing about that is like there's like different levels like we have a whole social team that comes up with like concepts and i you know we work with them but i'm not on that team you know what i'm saying okay. so like I'll have friends that be like, "Yo, why'd you guys post this?" And I'm like, "Fam, I have no say." <laughs> like, you know, yeah, I didn't, like, I didn't even know that was live. Yeah, yeah it, is, it is what it is. But that's that's all part of the brand. You really just like, yeah. you know, one thing that I do respect about Bleacher Report too is like they're always like asking for ideas. Like, like week one, bro. Like, I went in with the mentality of like, all right, let me just sit back, listen, and just take notes. And they're, you know, I was on calls. They were asking me about you know, different things, perspective. And I was like, oh, this, they're, they're very inclusive, you know? Yeah, that's what it's all about. And I, I know a couple of people that got some ideas too. So you want to make yeah, that we'll call. Talk, bro. We got you. <laughs> we'll talk, bro. We can talk. But, uh, 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 let's switch gears real quick. So obviously, you know, you create a strategist, you know, you've been in the space as, a, as an athlete. Ideal brands that you're like, all right, this this is my this is my starting this is my five aside that I like from a brand perspective. Mm -hmm. They're doing it the right way. Their strategies on point. Their partnerships are on point. They, they they their contents on point. Who's your like? If you had to pick a five aside team from from that standpoint, five aside. I don't know if I can give you five. Um, yeah, it's a little bit sporadic, but these are just brands that I. Uh, you know, obviously pick up personally. Nike's mm -hmm. number one. Um, Nike's a brand that I always, you know, stand close to as, as much as I try to like venture off and, you know, try to explore other other soccer specific or sports brands. Like Nike's always a brand that I'm like, all right, this is the content that I would love to be like working on at some point. Um, and just how they tie, like <clears throat> one of my good friends who's working in at Nike right now, she's doing a campaign with this like, just like women's create women creators and just like how they're influencing you know their lane and their society and i think yeah. that's one of the dopest things ever uh the north face the north face is a dope brand for me um you know similar reasons but how they lay out their content um i think that it's it's weird because i'm not necessarily like an outdoorsy person but they yeah. they have this type of like I don't know. This just like inviting, like it's just the type of content they put out. They, they, it's attractive to me. Yeah. Um, who else, man? <sighs> There's some dope brands out there that I did. I'm just hitting the blank on right now, bro. But oh, it's like, all good. We got, we got some rapid fire questions for you. We're gonna put you on the spot. Yeah, we'll let you, yeah, like, we'll let you like, slide with this one. You put, you put me on the spotty. 
<laughs> but yeah, let's get into rapid fire. Or, 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 I think so, you might have some questions. Before we jump into rapid fire, like I wanna I wanna back up a little bit. You mentioned, you know, your 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 girl said that you can write a book about your career, right? So I'm imagining there's a lot of good stories in there. I don't, I don't know what your situation is like with, with Bleacher Report, but you know, definitely two centsfc.com is open for you if you wanna, you know, share some of those stories, some of those pro stories that you oh, had, yeah. you know, do a little column or something, you know. Um Hell yeah. that's just my little my little shameless platform, plug. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that's my that, that's my that's shameless noted, plug. Bro. Always got to put that out there. Um, so let's jump into these rapid fires, though. Um, so on game days, what was on your pre-match playlist? Who, um, yo, um, it literally is crazy because like I was, I never liked to be DJ, but towards the end of my career, I was DJ. Um, <laughs> but it was because. Like the the music scale was so wide, bro. Like you can be listening to like like Deep House or whatever, then listen to like R.I.P. Pop Smoke, you know. Um, then listen to some reggae going. Like our locker room would be popping. I mean, it's just it's just crazy. But like one thing that was consistently on my uh, my playlist, like if I'm listening to headphones, bro, I would listen to some some Drizzy where he's like spitting like kind of like the the freestyle joints, bro. Okay. Just yeah. Deep, deep, deep freestyle, the, um, like nine, nine a.m. and like yeah, five, nine, nine a.m. to five a.m. Okay. Yeah. Exactly in Toronto, okay. Dallas, like just when he's yeah. speaking, just kind of going off or whatever. Um, obviously, pop smoke. Um, man, I can't even hit it on the head right now. It's just so many different things, like you know, different types of music that I listen to. But all yeah, right, real quick, here, Spotify right. or Apple or Title? Which one? Apple. Apple. Okay. All right. Yeah. I peep you on Spotify though. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm tired with me with mine. So um all right. So if you could if you if you could do your role that your your current role that you're in with any professional team, which team would it be and why? Ooh. Man. Benicia out here putting out fire, dog. Um, I thought I thought you was an Arsenal fan. <laughs> I, I am an Arsenal fan, man. Arsenal is, Arsenal does put out fire when it turns to like you know different content like that. But Benicia FC, you know the homie Ethan is over there working, and I see a lot yeah. of their content. I'm just like that would be that would be a bless just to work with the their team and 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 yeah, you they, know, whatever they're capacity, killing. Honestly, yeah, yeah they're yeah. killing. It. I need one of them one of them jerseys for real, though. <laughs> All right, and the Moby loves to loves to ask this one. Um, you know, you being from the DMV and always having having a very deep player pool. Who's on your five aside team? Like, if you yeah. had to pull anybody from the DMV to do which, a five. Somebody which, 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 like, which which five are you taking to get smacked by my NorCal five aside team? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, somebody asked me this question uh, in an interview like like a couple months ago, and I couldn't answer. I was just like, damn, um, shit. I gotta go with my riders, so okay. You're not gonna hurt no so feelings. Including myself, right? So myself, yeah. I I play in the back. You know, I can play center back, wherever left back. I'm, I'm riding with my boy Uum Etuk. That's over yeah. here. My point man is gonna be Chris Hangy. Okay. Um, I need me. I need. I need Joe Jow. <laughs> probably on the right flank. <laughs> Joe Jow's respected in the show. DMV. That's my guy. I, yeah, yeah that that would be his whole family's respected in the DMV. Um, and then the last keeper, right? I don't, uh, we ain't worried about keepers, you know. Yeah, keepers, I was down, yeah. Uh, yeah we gotta get field players. Yeah. Man, I need a playmaker. Probably Gideon, man. Okay. Yeah, Gideon. Gideon can run that that center mid spot for me. That's a strong five. I'm not gonna lie. That's a strong five. All right, let's move out of the DMV. So say, say, all right, let, like top tier players like top echelon players um who would be who would be on your five side along with you like ever yeah yeah like, like dream, your dream team or current yeah go current yeah, go players. five aside go five aside damn i don't remember this question being asked um <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Like, yeah, we do it, we do it differently at two cents, man. We yeah, do it differently yeah, out you here. Guys, you guys are, that's spot on, man. 
right. Um, I, honestly, I, I'll sell myself off because I don't need to play with these goats, bro. Uh, I play. Okay. I, I got TT Thierry Henry. Mm-hmm. Love it. I got Ronaldinho. Damn, dude. The the goat who just came back to Barcelona, Danny Alves. Okay. okay. Um, and and I'm all naming people like just so you guys know these are like people that I grew up watching. You know what I mean? Like obviously yeah. Terry Henry was my guy growing up, so that's why I'm an Arsenal fan. Yeah. Um Damn, dude. This is tough. I'd have to go with another another Brazilian, Robinho. Okay. Robinho. And then uh the last one. Shit, who would I pick, bro? I'd be I'd be disrespectful if I didn't pick DDA. DDA Druba. You know, that's my guy. Okay. It was between yeah, uh, Yaya and DDA. Yeah, man, that's my those are my two guys, but DDA. Your team, your team is all vibes, like <laughs> straight vibes. <laughs> you got you got Danny Alves. That's it. <laughs> like you know it. You know it's all vibes out there. The biggest vibe, bro. Yeah, I like man. that. I like that's that. That's a good squad. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's jump into one of our favorite segments of the show where all the shenanigans happen. Um, no car, yellow car, red car. So this is a rapid fire game where I'll read off some news topics and, you know, Moby and our guest, Pivo, will give their opinion on those topics using the soccer card system. So no card is um, I agree with it or I'm cool with it. Um, yellow card is I'm indifferent. I can go either way. And red card is um, obviously, you know, I disagree or I'm not cool with that. And you give a, a quick explanation of why you gave it that card. All right. Got it. Let's, let's get it. All right, let's jump right into it. So, word on the street is Ronald Coleman, you know, recently fired from Barca, is on the short list for the Manchester United job, but he could be bringing the infamous fail forward man Frank De Boer with him. So, what card are we giving this appointment if it's true? I'll let you go first, people. So, if I'm cool with it, it's no card, right? Yeah, yo, yeah, I'm, no card, yo. Let that, let that happen. Let that fly. Yo. <laughs> let, let, let that train wreck bring, up. Bring him over. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would say no card. He's better than Ole, and I think uh, he was he was set up to fail at Barca. Like that was never going to work. But I think he actually yeah. is a good coach. I'm not sure about. Uh, I might give a warning for the Frank De Boer because I'm not sure what he's going to provide. Uh, but Coleman, I feel like he can get the job done and he'll have some funds to work with and he has a solid uh, solid squad. I, it's, it's tough because, man, you, Cristiano's like good, but he's not good for a team. Yeah. And hurts the I, team. I said no card for the opposite reason. You know, as an <laughs> Arsenal fan, I'm like, yo, bring that man because I know he's going to fumble, especially yeah. with Frank DeVore. Um But... I think, you know, the, the, the basket that Man U has right now, you know, I might be, you know, kind of biased saying this, but they might be better sticking with Ole and just sticking it out because, you know, I mean, spending more money on a new coach to, to hire, I don't know if that's a move for them. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Okay. All right, so next one. Um, NBC Sports has, has extended its deal with the Premier League, beating out CBS, Fox, and ESPN with a $2 billion bid. So what card are we giving this deal? And, you know, are you guys a fan of NBC Sports PL coverage? Um, so based on that, like, what card would you give this deal? Uh, no card for me. I think NBC does a great job. Um, I wish they, you know, stopped all that streaming stuff. But I watch on I watch on the uh, Spanish channels anyway. So but <laughs> when I did when I did watch on NBC, they did a great job. I watch on the Spanish channels, though, now. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. I give it a red card, uh, and I'll be short and brief with this because I don't want to speak too much. But because of Warner Media was, um, you know, made a made a pitch for the Premier League rights, but obviously NBC they have a rapport with the Premier League. Then you know, Premier League probably sees something that that you know Warner Media, Bleach Report, Turner, the whole family doesn't have. So it is what it is. But I give it a red card. Mm. Okay. Okay. Let me ask a question. I know it's still on no card, yellow card, red card, but. Warner Media, if you could buy any league's rights outside of Premier League, um, whose would it be? Um, 
any league that comes to Champions League? Uh, well, CBS is <laughs> doing a great job, and we are. They doing a great we have job. A boy, yeah, we have a boy. We have a boy, Tosin. Uh, Didn't Bleacher Report already have Champions League at one point? Yeah, that was Tosin like my first Bleacher. question when I got hired. I was like, "What happened to Champions League?" <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 I'll talk with you guys off record about that. But like, yeah. I think Champions League is just consumed by so many. Like the audience is great, but I do agree with you. CBS, it's, it's they're doing a great job. Like mm-hmm. it's very entertaining the talent that they have to kind of like do the gameplay and the the you know go through different teams and announce the games. Like they're fire, bro. Okay, so Champions League, yeah, I feel like Champions League is like the golden jewel. Yeah. No. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Other than that, man, outside of Prem, like that's a tough one. I gotta sit on that one for real. No, no doubt, no doubt. Okay, next up. Um, Tampa Bay Bucks wide receiver Antonio Brown is accused of buying a fake COVID card, COVID vaccine card by his former personal chef, who also claims that AB owes him 10K. <laughs> so what card are we giving AB <laughs> for these alleged allegations? Uh, Yo. <laughs> that's uh, funny, that's funny. Yeah, that's 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 comedy. I, I would say Very AB of him. Yeah, red card. Like you just got out of like a whole situation. Like people forgot about it, and then now you're doing this stuff. So, yeah, uh, red card for me. Um, I, I I agree. I give it a red as well. That's reckless. Uh, <laughs> That's reckless behavior. Man. Yo, what? <laughs> oh, okay. hey, he's a reckless dude. So yeah, yeah I would. Reckless. It doesn't even surprise me that. He tried to buy like a fake COVID car, but um, yeah, that's right, why I was like, month. at first, I was like, maybe yeah. a yellow because it's a B, but I was like, nah, that's why, yeah, <laughs> can't be out here faking. That's a that's a health issue. Oh, um, yeah. all right, so last one Bob Bradley is out at, at, at LAFC as a head coach. Um, what card are we giving this decision by the organization? Uh, I'm giving a yellow, and it, it's contingent on who they hire next, but uh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, I mean, he obviously came out the gates really strong. You know, COVID 2020, I, I probably consider that a wash. And then this year, like, all his star players don't want to play. I mean, whether they're injured or not, you know, like, he didn't really have his, his full lineup for a lot of the season. So, uh, but I think LAFC, I mean, they got deep pockets. They got, you know, a good vision with their executive team. So I think they'll, they'll make a, a big splash when it comes to their next hire. Yeah, I, I I see I see your angle, Moby. Um, it does definitely depend on that. I give it a red card just because, bro. I mean, like he's brought. I mean, obviously not him himself, but like the club has brought so much success. You know, early on. Yeah. And counting twenty twenty as a washed year, I understand. You know, like not making the playoffs this year. That's that's big. And that's that's you know definitely exceeding expectations. But I think maybe one more season. He could have he could have had one more chance, but you know this is a game, man. It's cutthroat, man. Yeah, That's with money out here, so facts. Always business, never personal. It's always business, bro. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, right. that's it. But uh, no car, yellow car, red car this week. Moby, what you got? No, nah, that's it, people. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. If people want to connect with you, see all the wonderful work you're doing with Bleacher Report. Until we poach you at two cents, where can they find you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to sneak Instagram that in there, at, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on Instagram at pbito p e a b i t o. Uh, I'm kind of like one of those lucky, um, you know, Instagram users. But you know, not being at Bleacher Report, you know, I'm kind of getting back into habits of posting more, just sharing my journey. Um, my LinkedIn as well. You can look me up more pbito jue. More is my first name. Um, and then I'll, I'll pass over. I'm going to, I'm starting a website right now where I'm going to be like just blogging here and there, just sharing experiences with people that, that want to, you know, go along this journey with me, um, you know, through life and whatnot. So I'll share that with you guys when it's ready, but yeah, PD nope. on Instagram. Perfect. Yeah. So we're going to have all that in the show notes, but that's our show for this week. Make sure you scri- subscribe, rate and review. It helps us get discovered. Follow us on all the socials at two cents FC Check out our merch at two cents sports.shop. Christmas is coming. Cuffing season is here. If you need to get someone <laughs> something, get them something. Don't leave them hanging. Uh, <laughs> yeah, new the new uh the new merch drops uh Cyber Monday. So yeah. be ready for that. Have your pockets. Let's go. 
Yeah, Cyber Monday. So ready for that. check out our merch at two cents sports.shop. You heard it here first. El just yeah. said Cyber Monday is around the corner, so be prepared. Uh, and if you enjoy the show, consider dropping us a donation using the link in the description. It helps support the cost of the show. It helps us get wonderful guests like Pebo on the show. It helps L, you know, because he's, you know, he's doing a lot. I'm doing a little bit. L's doing a lot. So it helps out <laughs> tremendously. And then tweet us your comments on the show and any topics you want me or others to discuss. It's unfiltered. So we talk about anything and everything. No political answers. No, uh, no comments. We give you straight facts, straight unfiltered thoughts and opinions. So thank you guys so much. And to end with a wonderful quote, it's all about balance. I hope you guys enjoy. Peace out.